Thanks, Andrews. Meeting will come to order for the Art Commission of Oregon City, June 16th, 703. Dan, would you like to take a uh, roll call for call to order? I can do that. Commissioner Andrews? Here. Commissioner Andrews? Here. Commissioner Burek? Here. Commissioner Carlson? Not here yet. Commissioner Lugo? Oh, sorry, I missed Commissioner Jones. Sorry. Here. And here. There we go. We got them both on. Commissioner Planton? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Commissioner Woodward? Here. Okay, so do we uh, go ahead to approve the adoption of the agenda or just move on to the approval of the minutes? Approval of the minutes. Okay, did everybody receive the minutes? They were sent out with the uh, copy of the agenda. Um, anybody have any input, revisions, any changes? If there are no further corrections, the minutes stand approved as distributed. Um, the sound's going in and out for me. Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 And um, open up to public com comment at this time. Do you have any public comments? There is no public comment. And so we'll move on to our first item on the agenda, which is the Oregon City Parks and Recreation. Welcome, Melissa Turney. Good to see you. Okay, I'm that too. We're everything. Awesome. Oh, can you hear me? Is that on? I believe so. Yeah, I think it is. So, um, awesome. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Um, on behalf of Oregon City Parks and Recreation, my name is Melissa Sebastian. I am the Aquatic and Recreation Manager in the Park and Recreation Department. And this evening, um, I have a presentation set up. Um, so what I'm going to go over tonight is I'm going to give you guys a summary of our Park and Recreation Department. I'm gonna go over our current programs related to the arts. I will talk about um, the Arts Commission and Parks and Recreation and some things that we could potentially um, talk about and then end it with an opportunity for any questions or comments that you guys may have for me at the end of it. So Oregon City Parks and Recreation. Um, so we're a you know pretty small but mighty team this for this city. This recorded. Oh, Sorry. You're fine. <laughs> I'll keep going without the slide. Um, we strive to create recreation, leisure, and cultural op opportunities in our city by providing high quality parks, facilities, programming, and support services to people of all ages. And we're continuing to strive to do this. If you are not aware, we're actually entering into a master plan process. We just had our first kickoff meeting a couple of weeks ago, and so that's gonna be a process that we're moving forward with throughout this next year, and we'll hopefully have a plan adopted in the next year or so. Um, our Park and Recreation Department consists of a few different facilities as well as all of our parks. We have our Pioneer Community Center that has a lot of different adult and senior services like Meals on Wheels, they've got you know, computer labs and um, weight rooms, and they do different um, activities and programs through there, as well as have a large ballroom space and basement space that's used for a lot of community events and community meetings. We have our swimming pool facility, which um, consists of your typical box pool, but it also has a very large community room attached to it that's just under 2,000 square feet that we also run a lot of our um, fitness classes and youth programs and camps, um, as well as um, we try to host different um, talks and events there as well throughout the year. Um, another facility is the Francis Ermitinger House, which is 
um, the historic house that we operate and um, have open to the public to come and take tours on Fridays and Saturdays, but that's also the section of our department that runs one of our art programs, which is our art and poetry contest that we um, do. This was our third annual one, and I'll talk about that um, in the next slide. And then we have our parks, which is a big part of, you know, the Park and Recreation Department. We have a dozen, uh, several dozen parks in our system um, and opened up three new parks within the last, I think, 13 months, which has been really exciting to us this past year. Um, current programs um, that we have going on right now, so we, are wrapping up our third annual Preserve Our Past Art and Poetry Contest. So that's something that our recreation programmer at the Ermitinger House does each year, and our banquet is gonna be in a couple of weeks. So this is a program that we developed um, specifically for the ages of 11 to 15, because we don't have a lot of programs in our city right now for that age range. Um, and it was geared towards trying to get our youth um, learning about our heritage sites in the community, but also creating either an art piece or a poetry piece to submit for that. Um, and that's been something where we've worked with the schools, um, the Optimist Club, as well as the Three Rivers Artist Guild has helped us a lot with that, with um, helping grading the pieces and providing workshops um, the last couple of years for that as well. Uh, we have some uh, large community events that we do throughout our city in the summer. So we have our concerts in the park and our movies in the park. And then we try to participate in as many community events as we can um, and have a presence at those as well as um, our parks are often used for a lot of community events, especially the end of the Oregon Trail. Um, and then... Let's see, our seasonal youth camps. So we offer seasonal youth camps typically during the summers and winter break and spring break. And they're not specifically, you know, art camps that we run. Um, we're looking at trying to expand our camp offerings that we do have in the city, especially because the last couple of years, the state has been providing additional grant funding specifically for those programs. Um, right now, um, they're pretty, general day camps and we do include different like art projects within those and we'll bring in guest speakers to talk to the kids each week um, but again it's not like specifically you know an art camp sometimes we'll have themes along that um, but that's something that we're hoping to you know expand over the years too especially um, as there's more and more demand for those day camps each year so the Arts Commission and Parks and Recreation. So there's a couple, a few different topics I wanted to talk about with this, especially as, you know, I think you, when you're talking about Parks and Recreation and the arts, that there's a lot of common goals with it. Um, one of, you know, I have listed here preserving community spaces, making sure you're telling stories and preserving nature. So as far as diving into those topics, um, with preserving community spaces, I think one of the things that you know we're aware of is that within our park system, we do see a good amount of vandalism that takes place in that, um, and a lot of graffiti that takes place. And so, one of the you know programs or things that I've seen and heard about in other communities, especially with uh, my involvement with the Oregon Park and Recreation Association, is there's been programs developed for the youth to um, specifically for ages 13 to 18 to work with um, educators on you know teaching about street art, because there's a big difference between street art and vandalism and educating them on that, but then working with them on, you know, like a plan and a concept to go out and actually create that. And that's helped prevent um, some of that, you know, tagging that you may see. So being able to provide spaces, especially with like a lot of those like blank slates that you see in like park restrooms and, you know, big walls and sport complexes and stuff like that. Um, 
There's also been a lot of mural programs that I've seen happening in other agencies. Um, one of them, I think it was THPRD had put together one called Talking Walls um, and did some installations along fences and sport, comp uh, sport complexes and restrooms. And it really tied into a lot of their DEI initiatives because they wanted to make sure to provide a space to share messages of hope and inspiration and purpose. And then they involved, you know, a lot of other program or like agencies within their um, district. So their high school had a um, student union that participated as well as a nonprofit called Color Outside the Lines. And that ended up being a really great program for the youth to be able to get involved with creating murals as well. And then I wanted to touch base, you know, again, as far as, um, you know, the telling stories aspect and making sure, you know, with all of the park spaces that we have, um, each location is unique and has a story to tell. And using site specific artwork is something that, you know, we've been talking about as far as helping enhance a site and provide, you know, a deeper connection to our community at large. And for, you know, exam example, you'll see the two photos I have on this slide um, of DC Lauderette Park. There's a mural down there of kids swimming. And what I really like about that, if you guys aren't aware, is that site before it was DC Lauderette Park and before it was the tennis courts, it was the original pool in Oregon City that was built back in 1935. So I've always liked that that's there just because it shows, you know, you know what that used to be in our community. Um, and then we also are in, I talked about earlier that we're entering into this uh, master plan process for our whole park and recreation um, system, but we're also doing a specific park master plan for Clackamas Park, and there's going to be um, certain sites identified in that where we'll want to be putting art pieces and sculptures and interpretive panels in that. And that'll be something that we really want to make sure that those pieces are tying into the native heritage of that site. And then the last one point that I have on here is the preserving nature. Um, so one of the things that is seen in a lot of our, you know, especially being in the great state of Oregon and being in a tree city is that our parks have a lot of trees in them. And unfortunately, there are situations where a tree does have to be removed in our city. And one of the things that we really want to make sure is a priority for our department is that in those cases that we're taking that wood and evaluating it and seeing if there's a way that we can use that for you know, whether it's an art piece or um, just any other way than like turning it into chips, especially when you're dealing, you know, with, you know, like a walnut tree or something that has really beautiful wood that can be used for those items. Um, and then another thing I wanted to say too, I mean, as far as some of our park and recreation facilities, if you have ever been to our swimming pool facility, we have giant hallways that are all white walls. <laughs> and so I've always thought it would be great to get some sort of artwork in there or something hanging in there just because it's, yeah, we used to have, you know, murals and color in there, but now, you know, it's a, it's a big white wall. So just looking at some of that stuff. And then at this point, I'll open it up for any questions or comments. Um, I think uh, one question I have, and I'm glad there's so many people here um, because I'm just finding my way as I go, but mm -hmm. um, all those ideas are amazing. Um, and do you have plans in your master plan and as you get ready for budget to have a line item for all of those wonderful art ideas? I, so with the master plan process, we're at the very, very beginning of it. So we just had our kickoff meeting and something that's going to, you know, we're going to be going throughout this whole process for the next year. 
Um, as far as a specific budget line item, I don't think that's been identified because these are a lot of ideas that I've been thinking of over the last few weeks since I <laughs> was asked to do this. And there's stuff that, I mean, some of the stuff I mentioned is stuff that I have thought about just because, especially when it comes to like the use of trees and trying to come up with additional recreation programming and youth programs. Um, but yeah, there hasn't been something identified, but it's definitely something that I'm willing to, yeah, try to talk more about. Right. And if you need support on that, um, yeah, we'd be more than willing to um, maybe be able to sit with you and kind of think of what would you need? These are your ideas. These are the top of the list from your discussions and talk about what would you need, like just knowing how much mural costs or what are the materials or and what's involved and um, everything to put that together. Mm -hmm. And there is, you know, specific like talking about like what needs the Clackamas Park master plan, you know, there's going to be budgets for that process and putting in those interpretive panels and right. stuff like that. So Commissioner Lugo has her hand up. Yes, Commissioner Lugo. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I am just wondering, uh, so it sounds like the Arts Park and Rec has got kind of an art plan, but I'm wondering, does Parks and Rec, how can the Arts Commission work with Parks and Rec to help promote the arts in Oregon City? Um, I think, you know, so how we were, I'm sorry, I had a hard time, how we work together with promoting arts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think a big part is just, you know, the communication, sharing, you know, some of the programs that we have. A big one that we keep trying to get out to more and more people every year is our art and poetry contest that we're doing. Um, each year we keep getting a little bit more submissions, but it would be great to see that grow each year. Um, and then when it comes down to us actually identifying specific projects, being an advocate for that and getting the information out, um, especially if it ends up being, you know, if we end up applying for any grants for anything or try to do any fundraising or, um, yeah, increasing budgets or, yeah, finding funds for that, so. A bunch of what? A budget. A budget. A budget for the art. No, we don't. Um, we have um, our line items are specific to like recreation programs um, or recreation events are the two main line items that we usually spend of, out of for our programs. Okay, so if we were to find a way to promote the art, working with Parks and Rec, we would also need to find a source of funding for whatever yeah. that project would be. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. But it sounds like you're, I mean, the fact that you're here today presenting to us means that you're probably open to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Buren? Super. So, um, it was very exciting to hear what you had to talk about. And so, um, as you may know, I was involved in the ladder at Parks. Yes, so you were very involved. <laughs> uh, yes, I was very involved. Um, so one, a couple of things that we learned is that one, CASE, um, the, what is that? The Clackamas Arts and Industrial Sciences yeah. School. Um, they have a great program and students that are really interested in being engaged and they do metalworking and they, you know, do different really interesting things that they would, they were very interested in being able to participate in the park. Um, uh, but one of the things that we learned about is, is that sometimes working with high schoolers, and we'll just say in this case, is you only have them for about a year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like a short time and how, how a, a project can, an idea can start, happen, and conclude within that, you know, nine months um, is challenging. Um, but I do think that whole partnership together, you know, being able to set up, set up an idea, like, okay, being open to have metal, metal art in the park, Right? and being able to, to work maybe with us on ide identifying an idea, and then perhaps there's a partnership also with an art commission member and a parks uh, department member to be able to go to the school and work with them. I think they have an after-school class. Maybe it's partnered mm -hmm. with the Lions Club or something. 
but that might be a really interesting idea. I also think about um, Laterette also has some white spaces. Mm -hmm. there, there's still some um, some areas that don't have a mural, mm -hmm. um, and then being able to have that idea of a um, uh, kind of a contest for ideas, mm -hmm. and then being able to select, have the Arts Commission perhaps select amongst the top three or whatever, to then, and then a group be able to, to paint that. Um, kind of the, the work and experience that we've had with regards to like this, the, um, the intersection painting, the cost for that was somewhere like one or $2,000 with regards to the paint and, and all of that. So it seems even if we had, because we have what, $20,000, if we were going to set aside a small amount to be able to seed some sort of, you know, arts and teenagers and whatnot, um, th that might be a really great idea. But yeah, those yeah. Are my thoughts. Definitely, especially like when you bring up working with high schoolers, because, you know, one of our bigger programs, it's geared towards ages 11 to 15. Mm -hmm. A lot of the questions we get is like finding more of programs like that, but for high schoolers as mm -hmm. well. So, and part of why it's been the age group it is, is because it's a something, a partnership we did with the Optimist Club, who mm -hmm. specifically works towards that age group, yeah. so. I think, I think OC Together was a great partner for that arts and poetry. Um, mm -hmm. And they do, they focus in on junior high because that's where they see where drugs start. Mm -hmm. And they were mm -hmm. trying to, you know, have it a path, some kids that can find a passion other than trying to experience drugs. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it seems like it would be a great partnership with Parks and Rec, with the Art Commission. And definitely that's a, some wonderful ideas. A uh, quick question on uh, the recent um, increases in fees for the Oregon City Parks. Mm -hmm. For leagues, it's not really an arts question, but um, I did see that there is an increase in the rental fees for leagues and whatnot to be using the space. Um, can you please explain the reasoning for the increase in fees? Is this real? I don't know if I have the capacity to speak to that question. Mm -hmm just mainly because I'm here to, yeah, speak about mm -hmm. the arts and not the, mm -hmm. yeah, league fees mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot, it has to do with a big process that I know our department went through over the last couple of years and identifying um, where to subsidize mm -hmm. programs, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, any comments, questions? I don't have a comment, can you turn your mic so it's not so up so that you can be heard. And those chairs do adjust. There's a thing on the side. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is like the trick with chairs. Yeah, so it's not so up. It'll lift you up because you look like you're kind of. Oh, okay, wait a minute. You're not really, you're kind of I need like a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is that better? Yeah, that is. That's a lot better. Um, yes. Anyone else and anybody online that you can see, Dan, with any questions or comments? No. There are no further questions. Okay, Melissa, we will stay in touch. Sounds great. <laughs> and please reach out to us anytime and we'll see how we can maneuver through this brand new art commission to uh, partner with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, great sounds presentation. Great. Yes, one more question. Yeah. No, it's not a question. So okay. just to, it's, it's basically you, um, the arts commission should be invited to participate. I mean, you don't need to be invited, you're all citizens. So please participate in the master plan process. Mm -hmm. Please participate in the Clackamas Park. There's another meeting coming up on the, on the 22nd, as I recall. Yep. Um, you're all welcome to do that individually. And uh, you have as, right, as much purpose of inputting into this process as everybody else. And it's important that we get lots of viewpoints for mm -hmm. all of the master planning work that we are doing. And the Clackamas Park one is important, but I think overall the master plan for the entire park system is really, really important. We haven't had one in, gosh, I think it hasn't been updated since, you know. Uh, 2008. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's quite a while and things have changed in our community. Um, so I think it's real important and there's some surveys that are involved in that. Please, you know, get online and, and uh, do the surveys as well. Because mm -hmm. so that's where you get some little input about putting in art. Yeah, the website actually for our park master plan is going to be orcityparksandplay.org. It um, currently, the online survey is coming. <laughs> it should be up there hopefully sometime within the next week. 
Um, at this point, we've had our kickoff meeting, but we are planning on being out in the community a lot this summer and in the fall um, and having a presence. You know, we'll probably have information at our large events like the concerts and movies and I'm trying to be at the farmer's markets and the first city celebration and all of that to get more information and feedback for that. So and I have one last question. Um, do you have a timeline for your master plan? Are you getting it ready for the next biennial budget or? The goal, it's a one to two year process. Okay. Um, you know, I think the goal is that we'd have something adopted in the next year, but it depends on. Participation. Yep, participation, feedback and all of that's a big document <laughs> it's going to be yeah. a big plan because essentially this master plan is going to you know set up parks and recreation and you know how we look at our facilities and programs and staffing for the next you know 10 or 20 years so thank you this is yeah. a code sign i'm going to hold a pin up here that says someone online would like to speak so okay, commissioner great. lugo yes commissioner lugo. thank you i, I do have one Oh, thank you. Yes, I do have one more question. Um, and I don't know if you can answer this question or not, but um, I, I kind of have this pipe dream, and we've talked about it a little bit in the Arts Commission, of creating a dedicated space for the arts here in Oregon City, like um, a building or a facility, uh, sort of like the Multnomah Arts Center. Are you familiar with the Multnomah Arts Center in Multnomah Village? Yes. Um, Kind of like a place, like if you can imagine a place where the community comes and maybe takes classes in the arts, where there's ongoing arts activities. I'm wondering if there's ever been any conversation within Parks and Rec about using a facility or, you know, considering this kind of an idea as a project for Parks and Rec. So we haven't specifically spoke about that idea and kind of what I talked about earlier as far as our facilities. The only park and rec indoor facilities we have is the Pioneer Community Center, the swimming pool community room, and then the Ermitinger House. So, I mean, there's been a large discussion as far as we need more in general indoor recreation space and community gathering space. And that's something that is gonna be talked about through the master plan process as one of the like needs for Oregon City. So. Yeah, that would be a wonderful idea to add mm -hmm. in to really kind of asterisk that out, that there is a demand in the public, in the community for an art center and a parks and rec could be a partner in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone else? Any comments? Anything from the Zoomers? Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Melissa. Thanks for joining yeah. us. No we'll problem. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to our discussion items. And first on the agenda is the program development recommendations. Uh, I think the city staff report, Dan, correct? Yes. Uh, before you, we have a staff report uh, related to programs. Please understand that as we wrote this staff report, our goal was to help uh, seed the ideas that you guys are already talking about on the sides. We've had lots of little comments, as Commissioner Lugo just kind of alluded to, a uh, an art center. These kind of ideas to help create some uh, brainstorming from you. I, we only put these ideas together on paper, but we really would like if you saw something or contribute a completely different idea that this would really be something that we would hope that you would pursue. And uh, so we're going to open it up to any conversation that's related to this. So would you like to just go down the line to the first one I see is the art therapy grant. Do you want to put that up for discussion at this time? Or sure. any thoughts that anybody might have? Um, yes. Madam Chair, the, the arts therapy grant uh, that uh, is in the staff report, as you as you can see, it's a, it, it's a it's a an idea whereby uh, uh, art therapy uh, is uh, is not new. It's not a new concept, but it's it's been around a while. 
but uh, apparently more and more people are using art therapy, and I think you could probably agree with me on that one. <laughs> uh, more and more people are using art therapy, uh, particularly with children, uh, dealing and coping with cer certain life challenges. So that's one idea that um, is on the, this um, staff report. Um, so uh, I don't know if you want me to go down each one, but uh, I could stop here if you'd like. And um, I, I would, if everybody's agreeable to it, is to take them one by one. Um, so after the explanation, see if anybody has any comments or input on that particular idea. Is everybody agreeable to that? Oh, oh the process? Oh. Yes. Yes, that makes sense. No, and I agree with that process. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> um, my only um, comment on this, and it's uh, every one of these ideas are wonderful ideas, uh, so exciting. Um, but also my, my first question always is, is the process for that? You know, if that was something we chose as a project to start, um, you know, how would you do that? How would you um, be able to jury or decide on the grant, um, the call for uh, people that are interested, where that would go out from? Would it go through the city? Would staff be in charge of that? Would it be a website? So um, a lot of logistics to do that, but uh, not, not, un not, Impossible, I guess, is the word. So, um, anyone, Mary, Commissioner Anders, I'd be interested if you have any feedback. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm slightly confused with the description here. Um, yeah, the way that I understand art therapy is that it is um, a mental health profession that is facilitated by a licensed art therapist. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure who would be awarded the funding here. Would it be an artist or would it be... Um, someone who's in need of therapy services or would it be awarded to an art therapist who's then implementing some kind of service in the community that's then assisting people who are in need of additional support and using art as a means of expressing themselves? Is it is it a way of healing a community around a certain um, boss or topic of, of concern? Um, is it like, I guess, just a little bit more clarity around what, what were you thinking there? Actually, um, please understand, I'm not an artist. Um, I did a lot of research on programs that have been provided by other, uh, to help kind of formulate some of these. Uh, the reality is Mary Anders has just touched on probably the most important part of the Arts Commission is that you would be able to help flesh out all of those elements, answer those questions, um, and come up with maybe a completely different thing from where this is at. Um, again, it's a little awkward because I'm like, I know you're looking at me for some of it. What we saw was where they had offered a grant program or they actually had another program where the the schools worked, uh, We the Arts Commission would work with the school to identify students that might need assistance that don't have the funding available. Um, so they were able to create criteria that would help create a grant program that might be available to help assist getting a student who might be in need of arts uh, therapy it was like oh boy there's a lot of ideas that come around this and so that's why we want you guys to help kind of craft what you want to do with this and it's a great kind of a conversation again this is a, a starting point so I guess um, the the thing that I think we could do is put something together but I think we'd need to identify what the need is and what is the need within Oregon City and what's what what capacity would the professionals, mental health professionals have in Oregon City? Is there somebody available, you know, to offer, you know, that kind of art therapy that is being implied? Um, in, in reading this and, and thinking about the, the purpose of art therapy, but then also the goal of what this statement is, is I think, looking for, which is, providing a creative outlet for people with um, physical or mental stress or illness um, to express themselves. Um, and art therapy is, is one way of doing that. But if if Oregon City doesn't have the, the resources for that, and then maybe there's other ways of providing support to 
I, I'm, assu I'm assuming we're talking about young people, but maybe we're talking, I, I'm assuming we're talking about youth, but maybe there's a way to subsidize creative classes um, or camps for young people without it being art therapy specific. Does that make, does that make sense to you, Mary? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Because yeah. there's art therapy and then there's art. And art therapy is art that is specifically tackling mental health issues. And, and, um, and then there's art making that can be therapeutic. And they're they're di di different things. I think Commissioner that's... Lugo is on. Commissioner Lugo. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm just curious how this works for the Arts Commission, like, if we could just talk through a hypothetical, how would we, how would we do this? I mean, would we just apply for a grant as, as, as uh, I mean, can we apply for grants? Aren't we just an advisory commission to the city? Or it would be a warning. <laughs> Let's say, for example, that you create a program, um, and yes, Commissioner Lugo, if you have all the parameters and the, and the city commission accepted the idea as a, as a valid program to work with, then that would allow you to be able to, to apply for grants to create assistance to this. Um, the goal of these, this conversation today is really to talk about the, you have funds available already and that we need to kind of decide what we're going to do with those funds. And so that's, this is a, a, a kind of a percolating moment of being able to do that. Um, I do want to make sure that we don't end up uh, talking each individual item for the next 15, 20 yeah. minutes because um, it will do that, but. I, go ahead. Okay. So, um, so one thing I, I guess I wanted to support, uh, say is that I support using some of the funds to create a grant program. Um, but maybe we have a variety of categories under it because we, we won't know necessarily what the need is for that year. So I, I think about, you know, perhaps someone could, ap could apply it, uh, if they were doing some art therapy or maybe it was the case students and they wanted to apply to do a mural or, or something like that so we could be saying, okay, yes, we want to use some of our funds, $5,000 or whatever it might be for a grant program, and then we work on figuring out what that grant program should include. Um, so. I wanted to also bring up an idea. There's um, organizations and clubs out there that they focus on children of abuse. Children's Center is one of them, and I know that they do use um, art as a therapeutic, I don't know, as Commissioner Wilson said, not necessarily art therapy, but art as a therapeutic process for when they arrive. So maybe it's as simple as offering funding for that, for um, that program that they have within the Children's Center. I think what comes to mind for me is going back to the, um, the statement that we came up with that's guiding our work and using that as a compass to decide on what kinds of places and spaces we want to put our energy. Um, and that goes back to acknowledging the past, fostering the present, and envisioning a future where the arts are celebrated as a vital force that brings joy and builds community. So I think that should kind of be our, our guide <laughs> going forward. Yeah. I agree. Um, I, I definitely agree. For for me, in hopefully not jumping ahead too much, stop me and pull me back. If, but um, I, I, looking at all four of these simultaneously, to me, the the you know, market feasibility study um, on the creation of a multi art center um, and developing community programming to support artists, including support for for diversity, equity, and inclusion. To me, those two seem to be the ones that really fit the best with what we want, what we're trying to do. Um, and the other two, maybe, but I think they would need to be re reassessed and reworded. Um, yeah, but I, I'm also seeing um, public art is not on here any in any way, shape, or form that I can see, and I think that's a really big priority for the commission. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Could you um, tell us a little bit more about this thoughts about what you what you see that as as uh, which part 
um, what that you said, the thing that's missing, the community, what was the term you used for what, what you don't see here for public art? Like, can you explain a little bit more about your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I, I'm just not seeing our desire to have a public art program and support for public art within the city um, encompassed on here. And I know that's something that we have all talked about, mm -hmm. both in the form of murals and continuing to support the development of, of more murals and then um, art in public spaces okay. um, throughout the city, whether it be in parks, whether it, um, just around the city to make it a a richer place for the community. Right. Um, I understand that. And I'm just, I'm just not seeing that reflected on here. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I know we, the Art Center has also been, I think you know, that's a big one on our list. Yeah. Um, I'm, I could go on more, but I will I will secede to the pen over yes. there. <laughs> Commissioner Lugo has got Commissioner her hand Lugo. Um, Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't lose touch with, like, I, what I heard originally was we were going to go through these one by one. And I'm not sure if we're still gonna do that, but um, I think I was hoping that Right. I think somebody mentioned in um, just thinking about time wise that if we go through each one of those, we still have other things on the agenda. So maybe even um, to give some feedback like Commissioner Wilson did what are you two favorites? What is your one favorite? And kind of get kind of a consensus and maybe from there have a work session where we hammer it out a little bit more. But at least in this meeting, because of time um, to kind of go through and if we want to just go one on one and give our ideas. Uh, I think I mean, I, I, don't really, I don't really care, but it, I feel like if we don't spend the time talking about it now, when are we going to talk about it? I mean, we're talking about how are we going to spend our money. Okay. And the first idea, so I, I don't know. I, I, just, I thought that was a good idea to go through them one by one. All right. I, I kind of hate and it when like, somebody says, oh, here, here's a good idea. Let's talk about this. And then the next person says, oh, we don't have time to talk about that. Let's not do that. Right. I understand. Um, Commissioner Lugo, would you like to kind of lead it off and give your input from those four items? Is there something that you feel is more important or uh, no, something? No, I, I, mean, I think, you know, I mean, if, if, if you want to be expedient, I mean, I think that, you know, um, what she just said was, what they just said was, was great. I mean, I, I'm totally in alignment with you on that. I, I think, you know, you, you said that those two to focus on, and then the one that was missing was public art. Um, yeah, I think that's great. And you, you really said everything that needs to be said. Maybe it might be a, a good option to take one step back and just say, what are the main categories we want to focus on? And then if these projects, these specific four, fit in there anywhere, or if there's other ones that might fit in. So like if you wanted to say, we want to focus on public art, say art and youth, uh, um, physical or I don't know how to phrase this right, but you know, art physical structure um, in the community. So like Public an art, art center, art. Oh, art oh. center okay. like something tangible, right? Mm -hmm. Tangible art uh, resources or something to that degree um, and bucketize these and then go back and say, okay, now what are the little items we wanna, the little programs we can tag under those main categories we're interested in and go from there. I also just wanted to add that we've talked about a community survey as a way of getting more of an understanding of what people are interested in us supporting. And before we dive into this fully, I just want to bring that point back up is do, are we still interested in that and getting that feedback? Cause we could ask staff if we could have a, uh, if we could have them put together a survey based on categories of potential support that we could offer. I, I agree, um, but I think we need to have um, survey questions to ask them. So if we come up with ideas, then we could get feedback on those. So if this is what we're interested in, what do you as a community think of that? What are your, this is what we think is good. What do you think of these ideas? And then they can say, yes, I like that idea. Yes, we need uh, grant support for different events or community things. No, we don't want an art center. Or, yes, we really want public art. And, and then we could, you know, kind of 
it can help guide a survey if we outline our ideas. Could I make a suggestion about possibly surveying the surveyors? Um, and I'm suggesting that basically we take some of these ideas, create um, a basically a block so that you can give some feedback on what you thought of the ideas, what might be some of the stumbling moments, just kind of break out a few questions that you might have as well to help then craft all of this combine it all together so that then we can kind of as staff can bring back a report that says here are some of the questions that might be great to craft that survey for the citizens that we want to do um we saw some uh, reviews from and commentary from everyone and and everyone's like wow did you i didn't realize i was going to have this much uh i don't want to say negative but uh not as supportive towards a specific program but we saw a couple programs really stand out um, I guess because I, what I fear is, is that as we are talking about all of this and we're crafting all of this, that uh, oftentimes we get excited about all the ideas and then we realize we only have X amount of dollars that can only go mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that if we, I think I hear this from a lot of like city commissioners often, I'm not sure it was this one, but I'm going to say <laughs> that uh, oftentimes we want to be really good at a couple really good things rather than trying to slap a bunch of together um, and only do partially good on all those based on that. Yeah, I agree. I think we come up with our top ideas and we do a survey and let the community help guide where we put our funding. So I will put together a survey for you as the surveyors to come up with some. And if they, so, what do you what, Daniel, can Daniel, you describe what you mean by that? Daniel, they have to make that decision, not you. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what you mean. By so I would take these ideas, uh, put them into a survey. Um, like and you then mean have, these these ideas? Yeah, and and then leave some blocks open for completely general ideas that are all on your own, and then that would give you a section to, to provide feedback on different elements of it, and then maybe uh, potential questions that you might see from the survey. This is, the, this is Madam Chairman, to the chair. This is why I love this 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 commission. The create it's already oozing with creativity. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 need to rein it in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, keep in mind, I mean, this, does this merit a work session? And would people be open for that? That go. that's we set a block of two hours and we discuss these ideas and any other ideas, and in a group decide this is something that we think is doable and we want to begin. Are people open to that? I think a work session is a great idea. I have no time, but I agree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think one thing that would be helpful um, for me is, if we do do the work session, um, is to be able to have a general, especially on the uh, feasibility study, like a general cost that that would be, so we know like how much of the budget it would take. Um, and then the other piece that I think would be helpful is to know if other organizations are doing similar things. Um, that's the, the other piece. Commissioner Lugo is on. Commissioner Lugo? Yeah, um, so I'm all for asking the community to tell us what to do. Um, but I'm wondering how will we ensure that a community survey is actually statistically significant? In other words, that it actually reflects our community. Um, just some input on that. There's many events that are taking a place through different organizations over the summer. Um, I would like to put it out for an idea that we have that questionnaire put together and that is given out to the public. I mean, the Festival of the Arts is coming up the second week of August. They attract close to 3,000 people, um, mostly from Oregon City, and to be able to give out questionnaires at that time for people to give out. Um, there's the Archbridge celebration. Um, Soul Flags has events going on all the time. Commissioner Wilson in your art in Oregon has events all the time. And I think there's so many different organizations that we can use to send that questionnaire out. Um, but we have to do the questionnaire. <laughs> People open to that? For joy. <laughs> we have to do the work session, figure out what our uh, list of programming ideas are and then survey the community uh, on what things they support so that kind of do
I would be curious to know, um, just, uh, I'm fairly new to Oregon City, like what are the, um, what are the main concerns of the residents? Um, and see how art can be helpful in addressing that need. Um, and I don't know if it's the unhoused population that happens to be in Portland and in Oregon City, or if it's um, the the rising floodwaters and the environmental impact of climate change, or if it's um, I don't, I don't know, like, just what, what is important to them. And I don't know if we have that data somewhere or if there's already been a survey or some kind of um, general consensus, but I would be curious to know that and think about how art can be a way of, of exploring some of those topics. Yeah. To add to that, that's something I think a lot about with art in Oregon because there are so many difficult issues out there from poverty, homelessness, climate change, all, all, of the, all of these issues. And art has a capacity to help with some things, but it, ultimately it doesn't feed people. It doesn't end climate change. So really thinking about what the needs are, but then also what is the capacity? What, what capacity does art have to offer help and support to the issues that we can support with in, in a real meaningful way. Um, because we can't, we can't solve and take on everything. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not saying that we are. Oh, I know, sure. I know. I'm just saying is when we, when we go to look at all the data of all the, you know, the, the things, the challenges that Oregon City has and where we can offer to help. It's just something I like to keep in my mind because it can be really overwhelming when you start to dig into that research uh -huh. um, of, you know, families that are having trouble feeding their kids or maybe it's a transportation issue or mortgages are out of control. Uh -huh. um, and it can be overwhelming. And then thinking about, all right, well, what do we have the capacity to help with? I, I think it could be as simple of a connection as... I think a real issue in Oregon City is um, um, being more inclusive, um, being more diverse. Um, and I think it's a focus that the city is starting to try to address. And I think art could be a wonderful avenue and a wonderful tool to bring that to light, to be able to include people of color and people of diver and inclusivity into different events. So is the idea that we would put together a survey that's just a list of ideas of art things we could fund, or is it to have more just a general uh, feedback from the from the community on, yeah, uh, taking some of these questions we're asking and putting them into a into the light of art and how art could play a role, and then also ask them, you know, if you were going to see projects done, which projects would you like to see? Here's a list. Is that kind of the, are we going more general or are we going specifically to, here's a list of ideas, pick which ones you like? Madam I would Chair. think of both, to me. Madam Chair, um, we could, do, with your, with, with the, I guess we're looking for some direction. Um, would you like to have a workshop um, to sort of flush all of this out? Yes, uh, yes. We, because that uh, sounds, sounds, it sounded as if that's where you were going. Yes. Yes, I think we need a workshop before we do a survey. Oh, so I guess the, the question, so that staff can have direction to assist, um, uh, is do we, would you like to take a vote or would you like to do it uh, through general consensus to do this? It's up to the commission. Um, oh, is there someone online? No, Within Commissioner Lugo gave a thumbs up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna do a thumb for it. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, I don't know if we need, if just for, um, process if we need a consensus you can, on you that. can either do it through consensus of the group or you can take a vote okay let's do consensus everybody in favor of a work session raise your hand commissioner jones raised her hand and commissioner lugo i'm assuming has raised her hand but maybe she wants a comment okay no opposed mm -hmm. and staff could you put together um some available dates um and uh, and times, I know many people here have full-time jobs 
Um, Plus other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, sorry, um, point of yeah. clarification. The, the work session is, the goal of the work session is to come up with a survey. No. No. <laughs> sorry. Continue, sorry. <laughs> okay, no, that's my question is, is if that was not the idea of the work session, I just want to know what is the work session's objective? I, I understand Great. the work object work the the objective of the work session is to identify projects that we would want to put in a survey to send out to the public that they then can let us know of these things that we've chosen which ones are in, of interest Important. to them that they would like us to pursue and then any comments that they have or feedback about those. Okay, so but. Based on that, I would assume that then this survey will not cover general just public art questions of the community. It's going to be focused purely on projects. Okay. That's what makes sure I'm understanding. Yes, I mean, I think with every survey, too, there's always space for general input from the public. If something on that list is they, well, I would work. What I really want to do is there's a space for them to put that in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anybody here who has a time that they cannot make it? What's your, for those of you who have extremely full lives, what's your preference? Weekends, evenings? Evenings generally would be, but not all evening, not. <laughs> I know this is hard. Evenings, I'll just say evenings. Evenings, okay. After five. Anybody open for weekends? You need your weekends no. to recover, okay. <laughs> All right. Commissioner Lugo said uh, evenings are best uh, on weekdays. Okay. Is, Sounds good to me. Meeting half an hour in either direction, and make it the same day you always meet. Make sure your your discussion is focused, so you have this much time, and so you know you got to get stuff done. Uh, just for history, we always overrun these meetings, and we always have so much, and. Um, People are exhausted after like, so I think, yeah, I think a work session just dedicated to two hours and that's all we're going to discuss and we're going to make a decision at the end, I think might be beneficial. Oh, if you have a work session, you cannot make a decision at the end oh. unless you have a regular meeting. Uh -huh. Yes, I was just about to mention that. Uh -huh. Yes. So then what you could potentially do is um, have a, your work session fall either between the, your, your next meeting and then you have your work session, you come up with a decision and then you would or at your next meeting adopt it. Or have a work session and then you have the meeting at the very end. Or that too. And you advertise it. One more time, I'm sorry, I missed that. You have your... You have your work session for your hour and a half or however you want to do it, and then you advertise the work session time, and then at the end of the work session, you have your public meeting. You can vote on what you're going to do. So you can, you can slice and dice it several different ways. So one thing for the work session, my preference would be to start earlier in our, you know, let's say we did it on a Thursday and start at six or whatever, instead of making it a seven to nine, I'd, I'd prefer a, a distinct time. Would City be open to providing something to eat if we did a dinner <laughs> session? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am interested in the idea of having a public meeting at the end of the work session so that we can have some momentum with the process and not have to wait until our next meeting. But I guess my thought of that is, are we going to have a lot of stuff clean up after we get through the discussions? I mean, I feel like we could get through them and there's going to be lots of things that we're just going to want to clean up and have a final version of um, before we present it for approval, right? And there's also that added stress of now we're on a time, a strict timeline and we got to get it done. Stress is good. Okay. <laughs> we'll get it done. That's my feeling. <laughs> but I, you know, if others disagree, then I'll go with consensus. Chair Andrews, so you're not trying to create the program through your work session. You're just trying to deal with the big concepts, and then you 
is what I'm hearing what you're saying is that you're going, you want to vote on something to say, these are the things we want to explore further. So your first topic item you had, you're talking about art therapy. You guys were trying to create the program. You don't want to do that. You want to just give the high level ideas. And then if you decide that's one thing you want to do, then you drill, delve into the details. It's the same thing we have at the city commission. Sometimes we try to, and I'm guilty of it. You know, we're trying to solve the problem right then and there where you don't, you can't do it, but you get the broad topic and you say, okay, we want to create an art therapy grant. Once you decide you want to do that, then you go back and say, well, what does that entail? What do we think it entails? You have a brief outline. Mm -hmm. Then you have these lovely people flesh it out, bring it back to you. Not like they don't have anything else to do. They have lots to do, believe me. <laughs> so I think maybe the solution then um, would be, Josh, would be if we were unsure, we would broaden it, leave it open, and then leave room for adjustment. Yeah. But by, by the end of the session, if it were, if we hadn't, we would keep it, o keep it open, like she's saying, mm -hmm. and not drill down to specifics, and then... Yeah, no, I mean, I, I guess I'm fine with, with all that. I just... Um... I, I still think having it at the very end of the session, uh, you are going to run the risk of, did we get a full, I mean, one, you're either extending, you're either limiting it to an hour and a half of discussion versus two hours, which is what we're talking about, or you're extending the entire session to two and a half hours, right? So you're already limiting yourself a little bit. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I think it's, it might not be, um, if, if we get to the end of it and we think we're not ready to approve anything, then we don't have the, the actual session, I guess. Or would we have to have it and just open and close? Yeah. Okay. So if you move into your public meeting and you don't have a decision to make, you just keep talking or you okay. continue. continue it and um, don't make any decisions. Okay. Give give some staff some instruction that you need some more information and you come back another time. And so you're referring to in starting the work session before the regular meeting, moving into the regular meeting, and then Right. I mean if you if you whether you do it as part of this regular Thursday once a month meeting or you have a special meeting, my point is if you decide to have a meeting after your work session. It doesn't matter whether you actually take action at that meeting. It just provides a platform for you to take action should okay. you decide to do so. If you're ready to do so, fine. If you're not, fine. Understood. Oh, uh, Thursday nights. <laughs> when, are we, uh, yeah, um, maybe like two weeks is my suggestion. What is that? Uh, or are we open? <laughs> we usually go from topic to topic. It's funny, this is the thing that we're stuck on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm on the, kind of open to uh, Commissioner um, Jen <laughs> um, Woodworth. Um, suggestion if we, st and I don't know if people can make it at 5.30, make it a work, eat, like dinner session, go right into our meeting afterwards and see if at that point we're ready to uh, put it on or or move it off into. I can't make 530. Can't make 530. Okay. We're going working. to have to do it as a separate work session, I think. I actually am not going to be here next month for the regular meeting. So mm -hmm. if we could do it between in, in a different day, that would then trying to do it that meeting, mm -hmm. I could make it. Okay. So Thursday seems like a good day, other than the uh, third Thursday of the month for the regular meeting. Um, the week before that, whatever that might be, what is that? For July 14th. July 14th. Is that our regular or that would be the week no, before? No, that's the week that's before. The week before. Why do they know? It's going to my calendar. I'm not in town. You're not in town. July is a tough month. July is tough. Especially the beginning of what July. We could, what we could do is a, a doodle poll. Yeah. And uh, send it Let's out, and, um, and staff can send it out, and we'll get your uh, your response. Okay. 
Sounds good. Thank you, staff. Okay, moving on. And everybody, okay, that before we move on, everybody good to move on? Everybody Michelle Zoomer? Lindbergh gives a thumbs up. Okay. Um, next is the uh, percent <coughs> of the arts ordinance. I know we can go through that quickly. Thank you for putting that mm -hmm. together. Can um, we? Let's find out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Have we all read this? I've read this many times. <laughs> I think I have this memorized. <laughs> um, yes, thanks for putting this together. Um, Mr. Garrig, um, and this was some questions we had on the percent of the art ordinance. Do you want to present it, Dan, or do you want to just ask for feedback on that? It's, Everybody read it, had a chance to read it. Um, I think the thing in, that stood out to me um, most was at this time, at this time, and I just wanted to open it up. Um, thank you for so many people being here tonight that the ordinance is not recommended at this time. Can it be for a future time? And in the near future, not maybe next uh, budget, um, or is this something that's long term? And what's the process? The ordinance has already been written. What's the process to be able to submit this one again to the city? I think that the issue here is that when this ordinance was developed, it was developed a long, uh, a few years ago. And a lot has happened, a lot has changed. And it's, uh, it's important for there be a, uh, a thorough discussion uh, uh, as to whether or not this should even be uh, going forward, should, whether or not this should even exist going forward, because uh, it's important to have that discussion. And then, uh, if there's support for it, uh, it uh, then it would go to the city commission uh, for their uh, final decision, and they very well may decide uh, to go forward or not. But uh, there needs to be some full-throated discussion internally uh, amongst yourselves and, and, and others as to whether or not this should even be or should it be at all. Um, so I agree with staff in, in their recommendation to not pursue this at this time. I do think that the commission, and that would be us, need to kind of settle and, and, and have even the workshop conversation, be able to decide you know, kind of what our direction is, um, uh, and then be able to address this in year two or something like that. But I, I, I personally believe that this is just one more thing on our plate that is, and we just have tons of things on our plate. So I do think that this is a good thing to set aside for right now. The urgency isn't there um, to do, to move this forward. That's my view. Um, my, my input on that is even looking at the stack recommendations, what we've been told is we have $20,000 in our budget. That will go in a flash. You have 40. Hmm? You have 40. You have a biennium 40? budget. You have yeah, you have a biennium budget of 20000 for each year. We're about each. to end the fiscal period of the, on the 30th and so on July 1st that money rolls over to the next year when you reach in your pocket you mm -hmm. 20 okay. <laughs> that changes things <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yes so yes um, and if we were to accomplish in the next two, I'm sorry, if we were to accomplish in the next two years some things that we could bring to sin, so this is what we've accomplished in the last two years, we've used all our money, um, then at that point, rather than an ordinance, do we have a line budget for the arts? Um, is that something that we can look forward to, that this will be annually funded? That's a discussion that you all have to have amongst yourselves and amongst and, the, yourself. and the city commission has to decide ultimately. Okay. I mean, I, you know, you never want to look back, but um, all of the capital projects, all the arts, there could have been an art piece in every park that has been put together. I walk the parks and think, ah, oh, we could have done benches, we could have done, but anyway. I'm sorry, Penn is up. Commissioner Lugo. Would Commissioner like to speak. Lugo, please. Um, I mean, yes, of course we should pursue 
uh, Princess for the Arts. I mean, if if we, the Arts Commission, don't support and advocate for a Princess for the Arts, then who's going to do it? I mean, nobody else is going to do it except for us. It's something that lots of communities have done, and it's a great idea. Um, it might be a political football. It might be dead on arrival. But it's something to do. It affects the quality of life in our city. It promotes the arts. And um, it's a revenue source for the arts community. I mean, this is a win-win. Uh, you know, the, the only downside to it is that there's a public perception that this is somehow a, a boondoggle idea, that it's like, it's not politically popular. But, I mean, we're artists. We're not about being popular. I mean, we're here to try to advocate for the arts. That's our job. Not and being friends. <laughs> if, we're not, if we're not going to, if we're not going to advocate for a percent for the arts program, which is really the legacy of the last Arts Commission, then basically nobody's going to do it, and basically nothing's going to happen of any substance. Yeah. I mean, I think this is the most significant thing that we could actually do. I also have some input um, from the documents that you gave us um, regarding funding for the arts. So you gave us the vision of the commission for 21 through 23. I know these were just goals. This was a vision. But there were $680,000 for tourism, which Arts Treasure Trove was one of those four. There was pro uh, provide grant funding to private nonprofits, 100000 Promote arts as a focus of the community, 50000 Use art to attract and engage more community members and visitors, 40000 Now, I know that was just a vision. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful ideas. Um, but there was a line item for the economic development, which we fall under um, with the art treasure trove. You know, I kind of relate that with the art commission that the community programs and grants was um, 1,785,000. Now I know that I'm looking at this one line item. I know there's so many things involved in that, but it seems like the city of Oregon City is very supportive of the arts. Um, and how do we make that happen? How do we, thank you for the 40,000, that will go in a year and a half like a flash. How do we keep us sustainable? And give us a process. I'm not putting that out as criticism. Give us a process of how we can keep the Art Commission and Arts in Oregon City sustainable. The Arts Treasure Trove, uh, $40,000 of that has been earmarked for this commission. The, the rest of the money has already been designated for other things. So that's not available to you. The, uh, the other thing is that what you're doing right now is uh, figuring it out, figuring, figuring it out. Uh, you, have, you, even, you, you haven't even finished uh, deciding your strategic direction in terms of your strategic plan. And a great deal of discussion is focused on money right now. So I think it's important that you take, a, you take one step at a time, develop your direction, uh, ha have your workshop, uh, develop your survey. It's not all, you can't build Rome in a day. Mm -hmm. So take, take your time and build the support that you need from the rest of the community. So because you're trying to promote the arts and also trying to gain the support of the community as uh, in that art is an important element in this city. And I'm not so sure that all of the community thinks that way. So take your time and, uh, and, uh, and grow together. Uh, because you are a committee of the whole. You're not the community of what, you're not a committee of one person. You're an advisory committee of the commission. You're not a 501 C three. So you're a committee of the whole, not a committee of one person. A 501 C three times many times a 501 C three is the personality of an individual. But you are a community of, of the whole. And not without the commission's this commission's approval, none of you can represent the commission unless your, your colleagues I um, also want you to represent them on any particular topic or any type of issue. So this is government. This is how it works. 
I mean, I'm just saying that right now we're in the middle. We're in the middle of uh, your the, the plan and the budget ends in 23. I know the wheels of the city move slowly. Um, I don't want to miss our opportunity to be able to start that process. Oh. I know it's a year or two yeah. years out, but I don't want to miss the opportunity to make sure that we're sustainable. I think that's what I, the comment that I wanted to make. Well, there are other commissioners on this on this uh, on this board and so therefore uh, it's a committee of the it's a commission of the whole and people have to feel that way as as a whole uh, in, in order to make things happen but um, the, the government has a process and uh, we'll, that's what staff is here to help you through the process uh, so that's uh, that's um, that's where we are I would just say that I agree with the recommendation from staff that at this time it, it doesn't make sense but um, I think we should be pursuing, you know, what are all our other options? We talked earlier with Parks and Rec, you know, if they're putting it together a big plan, is there a way we can help influence that to include more funding that they're going to receive for our projects in their uh, arena or space, if you will? Um, there's going to be other grants. There's things like that that we can kind of investigate, um, adding it to the biannual budget for the next one. You know, um, and then the additional recommendation from staff, which I think I understood was maybe we need to revisit this altogether if it makes sense, if we can get funding from other places um, that is sufficient to meet our, you know, our desires, um, our goals. So I, th I think it's a good idea to hold off on it right now, but I agree with your concerns too that we do need sustainable funding um, for, the, for the arts in Oregon City, so. We should continue to do that as a as an objective of this commission. I have to say I agree that I I don't think now is the right time um, to pursue this. I think it is very important, and I agree with that it can and hopefully will be a, an important legacy of this commission to establish this. But I, I definitely don't think now is the moment. We need to get our programming. We need to get our footing. We need to gain the community's trust. We need to get to know our community. And only then, when we've earned earned their trust and respect, can we try and pass something of this magnitude. And that Commissioner Lugo. Commissioner Lugo. Um, well, so I, I would like to hear what the staff reason is for why they suggest it's not a good idea. And I'd also just like to comment that this is about politics, and it's never a good time to introduce something that's about raising taxes or adding fees to a project. It doesn't matter what it is. The tollway is an unpopular idea. Nobody wants a toll bridge on the Abernathy Bridge, but it's going to happen because you got to pay for the bridge. If you want art in Oregon City, You've got to pay for it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether the arts commission exists or not. I mean, we're not going to like have a conversation with the community where we're going to talk them into like spending more money on something. I mean, the, the, you know, there's already a lot of art going on. The, the idea of when to introduce an art, a person for the arts ordinance, is not related to the existence of the arts commission. That's a political question. It's never going to be a good idea. It's going to be a good idea if you live in a community that has a lot more Democrats and is more liberal. If you live in a community that's a lot more conservative and is wary of spending money on taxes, it's going to be less likely. I mean, but it's, that's, a, that's a political issue. It's not a part issue or support the part. This is like, this, I mean, if, if we want to advocate for a percent for the arts, then we have to understand that it's a political recommendation about raising finances to fund the arts. And all I'm trying to say is that we're the Arts Commission. We should advocate for this because that's what we're here for. I mean, we'll probably lose the first time we try, but if we try it 10 times, we might get it on the fifth time. Thank you. Um, Anyone else here? Input from everyone? Anything else? Any comments? Input? Yes. Well, my original question still stands. I was asking the staff if 
please explain their recommendation. Yes, Commissioner McGriff is gonna um, is going to answer. She has some comments. I don't. I don't know if I. I couldn't hear all of her questions, so I don't know what her question was. Yes, she wanted staff to ex explain why what our reasonings for not recommending it at this time. I think you put it in your report. I, I'm speaking just for myself, not for the commission. Um, I personally support the idea. It may not be the right timing, but I think we can do this. Uh, I don't know where somebody got the idea was coming out of your budget or it's taxes. It has nothing to do with either of those things. Mm -hmm. I personally have experience in doing this type of a project through, a public, through many of the public projects I did when I worked at the Portland Development Commission. We developed our project budget for, for example, we did a streetscape project, not unlike the one we did on 7th Street. As part of that project, we knew because of the city of Portland's ordinance and the state ordinance that we needed to set aside 1% of the project budget for installation of art. And, and you know, it can take many forms. We chose to use our 1% for art to put in the decorative old fashioned light poles that were all over East Portland at the time. We put them on the modern streets and you know, they're, they're, they were cheap, but we were able to do that and then we added some places where they could put um, you know pole banners and things like that so that people could advertise different events or whatever under the city's regulations so i think what i have seen and john you you, you will correct me i'm sure we have kind of de facto done this in oregon city so when we did the seventh street project we might not have called it one percent for art but part of the project had art in it and unfortunately we lost that one piece on the corner that somebody hit but we're going to get that back through our insurance I hope but there is there is there are art pieces on 7th street so I think we have as a city in good faith done some things and even though maybe you wouldn't call the uh, the cross pole banners art we there is some art on it so in a lot of ways we we kind of did do it we just didn't put the stamp on it and label it as such so I think we shouldn't jump so fast by saying that the city's not done anything because they have they have we do have some projects with art uh, and we probably will continue to as we do projects but I think to take it a step further uh, you all can make a recommendation sometime in the future and pass you know I mean pass the buck pass back buck up to the City Commission and ask them to put it on their work session agenda and have some discussions and it can come back down to you if you feel like you don't want to you feel like there's heat to this uh, again it's part of a project budget now I know that there's some concern that well what if projects are cobbled together with grants well you don't take the art percent out of that part you take it out of the public part the public the public part of the but I mean not the public but the budget for that particular you know so if it's public works they know that they have so much they're putting into it that that's where that would come out. It doesn't come out of any other funds of that sort. So I want to give credit to the Public Works Department for having some projects that we've done as a community that do have art in them because they're they're there. Uh, we have some, you know, de facto sort of art pieces on the McLaughlin Promenade. Uh, so we have I think there is Are those horseshoes or waterfalls. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We've had some signage. There's some signage that, that interpretive panels that could be considered parts of art. So, okay. I, I really think that you know eventually you should have some discussions about it. But like I said, if you want to, you know, in the future later on, you want to pump this up to the commission, ask them to take a look at it. I, the more that I looked at the timelines and the dates and things of of, of what uh, Dan uh, informed me of. I kept thinking back to what was going on, and I thought, oh, now I know why that didn't pass. <laughs> I won't oh. talk about it in public, but I know why <laughs> okay. it didn't go anywhere. But uh, it's, it had to do with the, what was going on in town at the time, and, and mm -hmm. you have to think about what the composition of the city commission was at that particular time. So I mean, we're not going to fault them. So yeah. I, I think it's a great idea. Um, again, I'm only speaking for myself. My fellow commissioners could tell me, Denise, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. But we do have precedent uh, for you know other communities do it not just because other communities are doing it doesn't mean we have to do it but i think we have some precedent so it's not a bad idea just maybe table it for a little later mm -hmm. once you get things more on the ground like like josh said mm -hmm. so don't just 
dismiss it out of hand and, and you know, throw it away. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a project. That's very that's encouraging. Worth looking at. Um, the only comment I would like to make too is uh, many of the art pieces in town were were from probably about 15 years ago. I feel this at this time, I think Oregon City is starting to go through a rebirth and a rejuvenation of art, which I think is very exciting. So I'm really grateful to be a part of this and see that come about and to be able to, you know, have support from the city on that is that this did happen years ago and it's starting to happen with murals and uh, it'd be great to see it come back to life again. Uh, I think uh, Miss, uh, uh, Miss, uh, on the online, uh, I think Mr. Lugo, Ms. Ms. Lugo, Lugo. Ms. Lugo had asked that what was the staff's reasoning uh, and the staff's reasoning is in the staff report. Uh, but uh, generally everything that has been said to, tonight actually some summarizes what the staff uh, has said in terms of uh, uh, its idea, its recommendation as to not to do this now. So I think the, the entire commission, uh, well, most of the commission members uh, have have discussed it and uh, have that actually mirrored uh, the staff's um, recommendation. Uh, I'll just chime in that I, I'm in agreement that we should table it and it's something that we should keep on our radar. But I agree that we need to establish some um, some actually substance to our work and uh, relationship with the community and really recognition for what we are and really show that we're here to really invest in this and, and then make a case for why we should be considered to, to have some additional funding. So I guess part, part of what I don't understand is, uh, I, I don't understand how this was on the table in the first place. I mean, I don't remember us as an arts commission saying that we were gonna pursue this. I mean, I, I know that it's an idea oh, and it's just something that we talked about, like we talked about lots of other things. But, I mean, to do a percent for the arts um, proposal is something that, it, it, I think that's something that has to be decided by the voters, isn't it? I mean, that's, it's, that, that, would, that would be a ballot referendum. I, I mean, wouldn't it for Oregon City? No, so, no. I, I mean, it says, it's, no. No. Okay. What would it be? It would be a decision by the city commission. Yeah, and then an ordinance would be passed. But keep in mind, the Arts Commission is an advisory to the City Commission. You can't uh, do things on your own without their without their permission, unless you're talking about murals, which is different. But uh, everything else is uh, everything else when it comes to spending money or or uh, imposing some type of uh, percentage on someone is a decision that ultimately is made by the regular City Commission. Okay, so a percent for the arts ordinance is not voted on by the vote. It's a decision of the city commission. Correct. Okay. I, again, though, I'm not sure why we're having this conversation because I didn't know that anybody was pushing this. It's just something that was kind of the legacy of the last commission, and, and it's something that we just mentioned. But is, is there someone within the arts uh, commission who's been pushing this? That was something that I brought up probably probably a month or so ago, Jan, about the ordinance what, and just said what happened to the ordinance. Is this something that could be reinstituted? And Dan was good enough to do some research on and uh, put a report together for that. So I take that on my shoulders. <laughs> I had... Okay, uh, thank you. Jerry Andrews, if, if you want to make a... take a vote on something, here's my suggestion. You could take a vote tonight to say that we're not really ready to talk about it, but you could ask the city commission to put it on their future work session agendas. We have a whole list. We, I just added something else the other day, which I'm sure staff was like rolling their eyes, but you could ask us to put it on a work session agenda. We could bring it up as it comes up on the, the, the monthly sessions that we have. And we could say, yeah, this is something we think we should have the Arts Commission do further. So I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. If you want to take an action, if you want to, to say, maybe we're not ready to do it, but maybe 
you guys need to look at it. And then if we feel like we want to look at it, we can refer it back. I'm open to that idea. I'm just, I'm just making a suggestion. If, if it's something you guys think should be looked at in the future, we can add it to our future work session ag agendas. And that's, a, that's an approach as well. But keep in mind that this, is a, this, this commission is a commission of a whole, of the whole. It's not a commission of the one. And so all of you have, have a decision to make as to whether or not you want it to proceed at all. And that's, that, that, that rests on your shoulders. Just having us put it on our work session doesn't me obligate you to any action. You're just asking us to, hey, we thought about this. Maybe you should revisit this. And I'm sure Commissioner Smith is going to have a whole lot to say about it because he was on the Arts Commission back in the, at that time when this was brought up. And he may be able to provide some additional background that none of us uh, may have. Would you like to do that at this time or push it off to the next meeting to uh, make a motion? Or would you like to make a motion to have? I think we should just, just do it now while we're talking okay. about it. <laughs> Somebody want to make a motion to uh, put it on the? No, we're motioning to vote, right? To, to um, what was the words you used, Denise? To... I said you are, you're making a motion to ask the city commission to place it on their list of work session items for the future. I make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. As, <laughs> all those in favor? Wait, I'm sorry, who, second, who seconded? Thank you. Right. He's yeah. got he, to get, he, get it down for posterity. Here. Let's make sure our onlines, onliners can keep up with that. Are, are they good? OK. Someone yeah. says yes. All those in favor of putting uh, the ordinance on the list to the city commissioners the future, for the next futures week. list. Yeah, you're at you're, the topic. The topic. Future topic. Yeah. Future topic list. All those in favor of putting the ordinance, putting the art ordinance onto the commission's topic list of works. Say I aye. You raise your hand. As I said it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Aye. It's okay. like it's like. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Motion has passed to put it on the list. And now there's no guarantee as when it'll come up, but if it makes the list, on the list. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, we I, need, I think it's a good, a good solution. Mm -hmm. When they're ready to talk about it, they'll let us know. Yeah. So you would let us know that it's on the discussion, then we would, could come to that particular your, meeting? Your staff, your staff will know. I'll communicate okay. that out. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And maybe at that time we'll be ready to have a joint work session. Who knows? Mm -hmm. We just leave things open for the future so that we can have the opportunity to talk. Great. Um, okay, moving on to the future event participation. Um, I have mentioned this before. Um, Mary Andrews and myself are working on the Archbridge celebration for the interactive community mural. Um, in talking to other art commissions, they do urge their art commissions to go to art events. They wear their little art commission badges and they just are able to go there and visually support the arts in Oregon City. Um, would that be acceptable if anybody is, more than everybody's welcome to come, is that acceptable? Uh, yeah, this is the one where we're all um, approving you guys as our official representatives, right? That's this item this, that we talked about before, and we're like, let's allow you to be the official commission. Yes, but at that time, officially representing it us. was gray on whether yes. we could all meet together or we could only meet four. Yeah, let's not get into all the other things. Let's keep it simple. So, <laughs> I think at the time we all agreed, right. we just and needed to have it be in a meeting where we would. Yeah make it an official thing. And what's the difference tonight is I would like to invite the art commissioners to attend and volunteer to help the public, if possible, at the Archbridge celebration in support of art in Oregon City. If you're available, not required, but is that okay to do legally? Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. But we're also... 
deciding to, to have you to be our official representative, whether we're there or oh, not, okay. right? Wasn't that the purpose of having us on the agenda as assigning you to as our official representatives, okay. as opposed to you going individually without just as individuals rather than a commission yes, representative? Yes, that is, to get the That was the purpose, that yes. This is an art commission supported event. Yes. Okay. So do we need to do like a... Yeah, it's a general consensus. You can yeah. either general consensus or vote. I'm good either way. Anybody it? opposed? <laughs> okay, we're all in favor. Jamie, any yeah. online just, opposals? Just vote and do it. That way it's oh, okay. record. Okay. It's okay. official. Consensus is good, but if I motion you're doing to, it, vote. No, to, I, it's, I move. I mo sorry, I motion. thank you. I move, <laughs> I, I move to have Triest and Mary be our official representatives at said event. Archbridge celebration. Archbridge celebration. I'll second. second. Oh, there we go. Yay, thank you. Sure, Joe. <laughs> uh -huh. All in favor? Is your hand? Any opposed? Oh, wait. I've got to make sure I... Okay. Everyone's raised their hands. Okay. okay. Motion <laughs> now, has passed. We're getting there. We're awkward. For we're the Archbridge there. Celebration Interactive Community Mural to be... Uh, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> to be an uh, Art Commission supported event. All are invited. Cool. And we will have batches. <laughs> and there are other events coming up. The first city celebration, I think we should have some representatives there July 16th, and also the Festival of the Arts in August, August 14 and 15, I believe. The city's going to have a table, and you could talk to Kristen uh, mm -hmm. about volunteering to be at that table. Plus, I mentioned to Trias today that the uh, city's having a neighbor's night out, oh. and there will be a city table there. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the 2nd of August. That's in the evening, I believe, 530-ish at the end of the Oregon Trail Center. And they usually have mm -hmm. lots of stuff to hand, you know, not, we don't have anything to hand out, but, you know, maybe just being there. And is DOCA in charge of that, or? This is a city, city of okay. Oregon City Neighbors okay. Night Out. Mm -hmm. Okay. City you. sponsored. Can we rotate, um, can we rotate who's going to go to the different events so that we all kind of get a chance to represent our commission? Or is it just going to be... You can have my chance. Do it, Trace, <laughs> just show up. Well, my, under, my understanding um, from reviewing the regulations, and I'm glad that uh, Attorney Richter is here, Carrie Richter, is I wanted to make sure that if, for an event, we anybody can go from the commission. You don't have to. It's not required. But we can go and say this is supported by the Art Commission. It's not a meeting. There are no decisions. We will not be discussing business, but we will be there for visibility. So all are welcome to these events. And we can let the commission right, know. Can we, right, I'm talking about like tabling, like can we take turns sitting at a table or have a schedule or? Absolutely. Are, are we not tabling? Okay. Yes. Great. Is yes. that something that we can work out like, you know, sometime? Right. Yeah, maybe we'll go through Dan for that, just to make sure we go by regulation. But maybe we'll be able to give these are the these are the slots of time. This is what you'll be doing, and ask for volunteers. And you just put your name, and we can do that electronically, and uh, just be able yeah, to man the great. table. Yeah. So, um, so just for clarity. Um, all of you should go to these events to the extent your schedule allows, and you should say, you know, I'm here as an individual, but I'm also a member of the Arts Commission, and we'd love to have you come to a meeting and testify. You know, we'd love to hear your feedback. You know, we're going to do a survey. You know, all of those things should happen. But you cannot bind the Arts Commission to anything on behalf of the commission. You cannot say the commission is going to do X. The survey is going to say Y. You know, if you're interested in 1% of the arts, we are going to help you. You can't say we are going to do that. Come to the meeting. You can say that. Come, you know, tell us your concerns. Um, this whole, you need a designated representative. If you are going to have a presentation on behalf of the commission at any of these events, you need to have a designated person. But in order to have somebody sit at a table, it's fine. You don't need to take a vote to decide who's going to take their turn, their session at the table. 
The point is you can't, that person at the table cannot bind the commission to anything that you haven't discussed. So, um, so there is a lot of flexibility in this event space. Just be mindful of not binding the commission. Thank you for that clarification, really. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the voting to reiterate, like, so what we just did for Mary and Trieste was allow them to say the we versus the I. Correct. But any of us can go and say I as a commissioner, unless we vote like we did with Mary and Trieste, who now they can go to the Archbridge thing as arts commissioners and say we as commissioners. Does that make sense to everybody, the I versus the we? And you have to have the vote to say the we, otherwise you just say I. And just as uh, Commissioner McGriff just did a few a little while ago, she said, I'm here as uh, yes. this is my opinion. Or yes. this is my, I'm coming as myself. She didn't come in on behalf of her the entire commission. She just did that. Mm -hmm. The other thing you don't want to forget about is this Sunday at the library at 2 p.m. If you haven't seen it already, we are having our third annual Juneteenth celebration. And Commissioner Smith and I will be your rocking MCs. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be rocking the MC thing. He, he's on his way back from San Antonio, but he did agree to do this. So I, I can I feel free to say his say his name. Uh, we have a really nice program. Uh, we'd love to see you all there. How many of you have seen the online stuff that's come out about it? Not at all. I have. I, you, I know yeah. I figured you had nobody else has seen it. I have seen through Facebook. I saw some yeah. social on media Facebook, on it. it's on Instagram. It's <laughs> on um, if you haven't signed up for the city's e-blast newsletter, the e-trail news, please do that. You get it in your box. I sound like an advertisement tonight, but it's <laughs> stuff comes up and you see it. You can look at it or not look at it, but you'll get it. And as uh, soon as we get the logo for the Arch Bridge celebration uh, set, it's we're doing a doodle poll right now. You'll see the logo for that come up. And uh, this is, you know, this is going to be another big party. Again, City of West Lynn, City of Oregon City are sponsoring it along with our partners at ODOT who are uh, closing the bridge for us as their big contribution. And that is a huge contribution. We don't have to pay for any permits or anything, which is really good. Uh, so that's kind of another exciting thing that we're doing. And just to sort of give you an example of involvement. So Commissioner Smith and I had been bugging staff, particularly Tony, two years ago about the Arch Bridge said, look, the 100th anniversary is coming up. We need to start planning now. Well, of course, guess what? We were in ice storm. We were in heat. We were in smoke. We were in fire. Everything was going on. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. We got to keep the city from, you know, freezing over. So we finally did um, get involved. We, uh, Commissioner Smith and I pushed this. And so uh, the staff said, okay, well, you two are going to share all these meetings. So we didn't get any official, obviously, approval from our other commissioners to do that. But it's part of kind of something that we both felt very passionate about and come to find out our counselor parts in West Lynn felt very passionate about it. So we got together. And so we are actually helping uh, Kristen, who's doing a fabulous job, facilitate this along with our economic development staff. So we are involved, you know, to the extent that uh, we have each taken on a subcommittee. We are making some, you know, calls here or there. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to track down some some uh, people who have antique cars. But once we get to a certain point, we are going to turn that over to staff to say, okay, here's the connection you need to make. We'll make, you know, we'll help you with some phone calls. So like the Juneteenth event, um, I uh, came to the city and I said, I think we should do this. Uh, the library, our librarian, Greg Williams stepped up. And so he and I and several other people have been meeting uh, as individuals on behalf of the city to put this thing together. Um, I have had some assignments because obviously he's working full time. His staff is working full time. So I've made some phone calls and we do have con some contracts with people. So we are giving a little bit of an honorarium to the people who are coming. So once I made the contact with those people to say, hi, we'd love to have you come and speak. Uh, would you, are you free this day? Got the yes. I said, all right. I let the staff know. The staff has then picked up created the contracts that we need to have in order for them to be paid, et cetera, et cetera. So they've been, do, they've been doing sort of the behind the scenes work, but we as individuals have taken on some of the, you know, some of the mundane stuff that you need to do when you're putting together an event, making some phone calls, doing this, but 
we're, you know, and then I will go come on Sunday and help put up some tents and, you know, whatever else needs to be done. So that's, so to give you some idea of kind of how um, I'm involved in that particular, those particular events, I don't know if I'm going to put up any tents at the bridge thing, but I'm sure I'll be doing something. I'm sure there'll be something I'll be doing. But so, you know, we are, you know, as individuals, you know, involved, um, I've gotten pats on the back from my other commissioners. Well, I'm glad you're doing it, you know, <laughs> so, so that's kind of some of the things of those, at least those two events that I'm, that I am working on, you know, on generally on behalf of the city and, and trying to help do some as much as I can. And as much as, you know, they, cause we've had staff say, well, could you call? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. You know, cause I had some connection with a couple of the people. I said, yeah, I know them. Why don't I just call them and see if they're available? So. There's lots of things you can do within the purview of what we have in terms of our public mantle. And I like to call it our public mantle because, you know, we have to put it on. Um, some days it feels very lightweight and other days it feels very heavy. But um, the public process that we have here in Oregon is, I think, due in part to the fact that the citizens of Oregon decided they wanted their government to be transparent and open. And you know how things happen when rules get established is because somebody did something that you want to correct. So you make a rule to correct it and then you never know what the unintended consequences are. So please try to think of the, the, the public role that we're playing, that we're all playing as something that is, is to be supported. Uh, to, it's, it's, it's to help us is, is how I want to say it. It's, it's to help us not get into any position that we don't. And I, and I will say this, that I find our staff to be very risk averse, but that's their job. Um, and I, and I have, you know, I, I just talk to them about, okay, well, I know we can't do this, but what about this? So I understand what you're, what you're talking about. And I've been in this, in this public venue for a while, both as a, an employee and somebody who has promoted citizen involvement way back. And I want things to be open. I want people to see what we're doing so that there's no question that their government operates, uh, you know, with transparency. Uh, there's only a few things that we are up against that we cannot talk about necessarily in a public forum. And in that deals with personnel. Uh, it deals with lawsuits and the acquisition of public property. But eventually we do bring those things. So let's say we're going to buy something. We want to talk about it ahead of time and then we will vote to, yes, we will agree to pay this price for this or whatever. So then we do do that in the public realm. But when you're doing negotiations like that, and especially when you're dealing with human resources, some, we don't generally have a public meeting about it, but if there is an action, then we will vote, we will vote on it. So there's things that we talk about in our pub, in our executive sessions. I don't even talk to my family about it. Go, how was the meeting? I said, oh, it was good. <laughs> That's all I say. Do you need assistance Sunday morning for the gym? If you would love to come come out, I, I, I'll check in with uh, Mr. Williams to see when he's going to be ready to set up. Mm -hmm. I know they're shifting the library hours a little bit to accommodate this. But yeah, um, I can get in touch with you and let you know. I actually don't know exactly when he's setting up. So I, I have to adjust. I'm going to adjust my schedule for that as well. Yeah. There is also on uh, tomorrow night at Clackamas Community College yes. summer connections for Juneteenth and Pride. Yep. I'm going to that too. Oh, good. We'll see you. <laughs> will, I, will I see you there? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. And do we have a comment? Commissioner Lugo. Commissioner Lugo. Um, Commissioner McGrath. So um, thank you so much for being at our meeting tonight. And um, I just wanted to ask you while you're here, um, what can we do as an arts commission to advise the city commission? Um, when I heard you talk about the um, street, the, 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 the street poles and uh, the different ways in which like you've sort of seen art being done in Oregon City, even though it wasn't necessarily given a percent for arts label, it, it made me think about um, all of the instances in which art is done in Oregon City and it's not really been done with an arts commission. And I'm just kind of wondering like what you would envision the role of the arts commission being now that we have one, uh, you know, in terms of advising the city commission, would, would you envision us as sort of taking over some of those responsibilities? Like, um, 
you know, like uh, different art projects that have happened in the past in the city. Uh, for instance, with the new um, uh, the, the new facility that's going to be built, um, you know, um, up in, in the Red Bank area, the uh, the new courthouse. Uh, would you envision the Arts Commission as providing guidance on uh, art for that facility? Uh, what what exactly do you see the Arts Commission as doing in terms of advising the City Commission? Well, obviously, I don't have anything planned to say about that, Emma, but um, I know that it was a goal of uh, Commissioner Smith, Rocky Smith, to reinstitute the Arts Commission. And I think his, his first priority, and I would say my first priority, was that I was glad we were able to uh, reinstitute the mural uh, program. We were doing that when I was an employee with the city, and we had a lot of fun with that. And I think it really is something that can help galvanize the community, especially as it's being painted, uh, getting people to come and look at it. I remember when the one went up on the Hops uh, Upholstery Building there at 10th and Main, they had an area set aside so people could come with their lawn chairs, and they were kind of hanging out watching it go. Now, I know the one that's on Black Ink wasn't quite as hospitable because I went across the street, you know, to the other side to kind of see what they were doing but that traffic was just it was a little oppressive it wasn't really kind of fun to hang out there and, and watch that because it was like shoo, shoo, shoo. so I think that's that's one of the things uh, that could be uh, that you're already doing and I think maybe uh, if you have suggestions for other places where they could go might be, you know, as you're tripping around town, think, oh, that might be a good spot, you know, or that might be a good spot. I think the more we have of those, I was a little concerned when I saw the, uh, I think they're painting the building that uh, Renee's is in, and I saw that some of the mural there was kind of scraped a little bit, and I thought, oh, I hope you're just touching that up mm -hmm. and not, I'm hoping he's touching it up. The guy that was there, I saw him, but I didn't see, he was up on the ladder, so I thought, well, maybe they're going to touch it up. I hope that's what they're doing, but I noticed that the mural of uh, Dr. Uh, Barkley, I believe, on the Elks building, that looks like that needs a little refresh. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, Should you know, a list of restoration. Could, that's a little restoration. That'd be something. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing would be to, I know, and he, John just left, but I know one of the things that he and I had talked about some years ago is that we need to have some sort of an assessment of the pieces that we do have. I, I don't think there's one standard database. It's not something you guys could physically do, but, um, I think we, I think we started it, um, Commissioner yeah. Garrett. We have probably 30 items on a list really taken from the Oregon City Tour online. And um, we had a question to staff before, who takes care of that? Do we maintain it? Do we keep check on it? But it was said that facilities kind of keeps a check on what needs to be repaired. Yeah, so that's, that's something. I know be. he asked our, uh, John asked our Neighborhood Association if we would do an assessment of the pieces in our neighborhood and the person that actually started it just moved. So I've got to get it from him and see whether we need to add more. So those, that sort of thing. I, I think the other thing would be to, to, it's so hard because you guys have so many ideas, but as somebody else, I think Tammy, you said this, focus in on one or two things that you could do, you know, and I'll use your term, James, low hanging fruit, so to speak something that is really attainable. And I think the murals is probably that, but look at, you know, maybe another idea of what you could do. I was looking at your list as well because Trieste asked me to, and I really think the idea there's, I think they're all good ideas, but you guys may have others, but I think at least two of the four, as, as you suggested on the list, would be worthy projects of you starting out with. You, you, there's so many out there and you could get paralyzed in continually talking and talking and talking and talking about all of the fabulous ideas and you never want you never get to anything so i i think that i don't have a particular project in mind because you've already started on that one my mine was the murals that was a priority for me not only as a citizen but as a commissioner to see that come back i would like to see um obviously some more art in our town and so you know the public art idea that tammy is talking about is is one that's probably you know near and dear to my heart i think ways to um add art to places so an idea that that has come out um 
So I sit on the board of the Downtown Oregon City Association as the city representative. And I know it was down in Canby about two weeks ago, and they have a lighted arch over the entry to their old town. And to me, that's kind of an art piece. To me, that's kind of an information. It's a tourism piece. It kind of hits sort of three or four different things. I love the one in Old Town Bandon. They have one at the entry to Nye Beach, uh, where the Sylvia Beach Hotel is. Mm -hmm. And a number of communities have them. And I think that would be an amazing idea mm -hmm. to have one. And as you, you know, come into, I don't know what street do we go on, but let's just say we put it on one of the streets. And it's obviously high enough and so that any vehicle could uh, get underneath it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it says... Oregon City or Welcome to Oregon. I don't know. J James and I were talking about mm -hmm. what something, a slogan like that could say. Mm -hmm. But I think that would be an interesting piece that would cover mm -hmm. utilitarian lighting, art, uh, tourism. It covers a whole bunch of projects. So that's the only things I kind of have and, and, you know, that are kind of on the top of my head. And after I saw that one in Canby, I said, I want one too. I want that. I want that. <laughs> And they said it really wasn't that expensive. So they said that they'd send information um, to us if oh, we, if oh, we yeah. wanted to what see what West that would be. West side would be awesome. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So does that, does that help, Emma? Yeah, um, thank you. You're welcome. More, more, you, know, we have, you guys have great ideas, and yeah. lots of ideas are out there. We have one last thing on the agenda that I'd like to move up to the next meeting. Um, it's getting late. Thank you, everybody, for staying late. Thank you for coming. Attorney Richter, Commissioner McGriff, John, who's left, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for your support. Um, so let's move that off to the next meeting. Um, meeting is adjourned at 9 o'clock. Okay. <laughs>